Garrick Mock Monastery is the most prominent and consistent feature of Fire Emblem Three Houses. The average player will most likely spend about half of their playtime in the walls of the church headquarters. This fact alone is bound to make the setting become old. The lack of change may not bother you on your first playthrough, but subsequent playthroughs will most likely result in you being very tired of the monastery. Now, that is just the most common opinion I have heard. It's fine if you enjoy the monastery, but today we're going to discuss how to fix it and ultimately keep it from becoming a stale environment. And be warned, Three Houses spoilers will be discussed. First, let's talk about the atmosphere of Garrick Mock. Pre time skip, it is generally upbeat and happy with you know cheery music and whatnot, but I would argue that there needs to be some change, and they do it sometimes. There is some change here or there that is nice to see, but for the most part, it is basically the same. So the biggest changes in atmosphere or the feel of the setting come from when Flane and Manuela are missing, after Geralt's death, and of course the time skip. These three things, they change the music, they change how characters are acting and speaking, uh, and in, in particular with Flane and Manuela when they're missing, there's just a sense of urgency to find them, and I really appreciate that. And Geralt's death, everyone's sad, they treat Byleth differently, and of course the time skip is going to be different, right? So here's a few things I want to propose to change this and hopefully make it more of an atmosphere change throughout the entire uh, entire game, really. Even just even a single weekend that you spend exploring Garrick Mark Monastery, I want it to uh, change. You know, I want it to feel be like it's a, a living environment, which at this point it kind of feels very uh, samey every pretty much every week and. Even during the time, you know, a whole day could pass, but everyone kind of stands in the same spot. It's all very similar, and I think that needs to change. And I think the best way to do this is to add a meaningful day-to-night cycle. Uh, and the way to implement it, I would say, is just as you use your activity points, the day passes on, or you can have it pass by uh, through uh, an amount of time or something. And maybe even add the option to skip to a certain time of day if you want to. And that would be really important if you did this next thing, which I think would be amazing. Change which activities are available based on the time of day, or even based on the day itself. It's like, as it stands now, everything is available all the time at Garrick Mock Monastery, which for some things I think is fairly realistic, whether it's the like, the like the mess hall. Yeah, that should probably be open all the time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it makes sense that that is open. But there's other things that I would love to see just some change like oh well i need to say let's the church closes after the morning the and you have to do any activities you want to do at the church whether it's choir practice or uh going to the statues to uh to spend your renown or whatever else those have to be done in the morning so you need to like plan your time out that way like this needs to be done in the morning and then you say okay then i'm going to go do meals at the mess hall and then maybe the steam room doesn't open until later, so you have to go there at night or something. I just think it could be a really fun way to tweak the, the monastery and make your planning much more meaningful than it already is. Because I know for myself at this point, it really just kind of goes down to, okay, I'm in a garden, I'm going to uh, fish maybe a couple times, probably not because I hate fishing because it feels like a waste of time more, more often than not, especially once you've already maxed professor level. Uh, do meals for supports and to raise uh, motivation and then just like training, 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 training <laughs> uh, with uh, you know faculty training and all that. I feel like having a day-night cycle that changes where characters are, what things can be done at what time, I think would be really effective in making Garrick Mock Monastery feel like a living, breathing place rather than this static environment that we see it as now. But I think to really make that successful, we would have to add more activities. And that's the second thing we want to talk about. There are entire areas of the monastery that honestly feel unfinished as if there should have been activities there to, to do. Uh, like the stables, or the knights hall, or the library. There could have been so many activities that fit in with those locations that are just omitted from the game. So the stables, for instance. We already have a, a way to train Faith while exploring. Why not give us the stables with a chance to train our horseback riding? And then you can even add on to that. Maybe there's Pegasi in the stables as well. You could train your flying. 
And maybe in the knight's hall, you could train your armor rank, or maybe you could trade your sword, lance, or axe rank on the knight's hall, or something like that. And then in the library, you could train your reason, and maybe even train your authority by learning, quote unquote, learning battle tactics or something. There's so few activities that allow you to uh, raise uh, skill levels with other units like the choir practice that it would be so cool to see more of that and it would add things to do with your activity points and it would that and i think that ultimately would make the game feel more uh alive again more alive it would help the atmosphere feel you know just different there'd be different things you'd want to focus on different things you'd want to do even on different playthroughs different things to test out i just think more options would be good overall for the monastery and making it not become the tedious mess that it is in the end game like honestly i've had so many playthroughs where i get to the last couple chapters and i just skip all the weekends and i just warp skip the chapters and i'm just done because the monastery just wears me out i think the next thing to make it so the monastery just doesn't wear players out i think our, our next topic is what would really nail this point home and really make it work just allow players to traverse the monastery via a menu like literally everything that's how Valkyrie Chronicles handles it, and it, it really is great. Uh, there's a base of operations, at least, okay, I've only played Valkyria Chronicles 4, so I haven't played any of the other ones. Uh, but in the fourth game, at the very least, and I imagine it's somewhat similar in the other games, there is a base of operations, and you are able to upgrade weapons, uh, train characters, and different stuff. But instead of it being this, you know, I run around as, the, as Claude, the main character, to do stuff, I just go to menu, to menu, to menu, done. And it's so quick and snappy. I think Three Houses really could have benefited from having an option to do that. I would have loved to just have a menu open and just say, okay, Byleth trains with Catherine uh, for the, for swords, and then we move on to, okay, and then just menuing to Mess Hall, then menuing to uh, the Garden, just menuing. I understand the 3D environment's like something they're probably really proud of, and it was like this cool thing to run around maybe the first half of the game. Not even the first half, maybe like the first quarter of the game. It was like exciting to explore and find new places. But man, it gets old quick. So leave the exploration in there for people who want it. But give us menus. I play, I've been playing Fire Emblem for, you know, a decade and a half now or more. And I just want... <laughs> I just want menus because I like menus. Menus make sense to me as a, as a Fire Emblem fan, as an RPG fan. Menus are good. They get it done. We don't need this big 3D environment that is essentially just a really long menu to get through. That's all it is. It doesn't add anything to the game that I'm running around. It may quote unquote immerse you, but in, <laughs> immerse you in the game, but I don't think it would deter or take away from the experience if you just gave us a menu even if it's on like only on second playthrough forward you can use a menu to do the, the monastery i don't care that would have done so much in speeding up the game making the monastery suck less and making it a thing that i actually look forward to using because i uh i, I oh man sorry i'm just this one's got me <laughs> i need menus give me menus intelligent systems menus please okay next one Change the location of the base of operations after the time skip. Now, it makes sense for uh, Silver Snow to take place at Garrick Mark Monastery. I'll take that. Maybe even Blue Lions makes sense because uh, Dimitri's kind of been, you know, oh, not disowned, but kind of just like shunned by his country. So that makes sense too. But why not give us, uh, like, put us in Deirdre, the capital of Leicester, uh, for... Uh, Golden Deer. Why not put us in Adrestia, you know, or somewhere? Put us in Embar. I think that could have been a really fun change of pace, and it would have made the monastery made it would honestly would have made part one suck less on sub on subsequent playthroughs because I wouldn't be as tired of it. And you know, I understand that it would mean a bit or even a lot of tinkering with the story, but it could be such a powerful thing just to change the location. They do it once. They do it for the Crimson Flower route. Once you pick Edelgard's side, uh, you don't... Uh, the, the following week, you don't use... Or the following month, I should say. You don't use Garrick Mark Monastery. You just use some 
four in Adrestia. Like, that's great. I mean, it was simple and basic, but build on that. Build on that and make it a, a fleshed out environment. And that could have changed everything for me personally. That would have made the monastery slash just 3D environment that I have to explore to do things so much more bearable. But that's enough rambling for me. Those are the four things I would change. Uh, just change up the atmosphere, add more activities, allow players to traverse the monastery via a menu, and just change the location of the base of operations for the time skip. That's all I want. Is that asking too much? Probably. I don't know. I don't make video games. I know it's hard, but I don't do it. So whatever. But those are my thoughts. Please leave yours in the comments. What do you think of what we've talked about today? And also, how would you change the monastery? How would you change it to become a more engaging environment? Something that you look forward to using rather than what it is now. And of course, like the video for visibility. It helps other people find the channel so we can have an even bigger discussion. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Oh, and I guess one last thing. One last thing I'll plug. Sorry, I'm plugging a lot. Plug, plug, plug. That's all I do, I guess. I'm shilling over here. Uh, just... Go check out the Discord if you want to be part of other discussions and stuff. A lot of times I ask for help on videos and a lot of times I ask for people's opinions. So if you want to be a part of that discussion, make sure to join the Discord. A lot of cool people there. And yeah, thanks for watching, friends, and I'll catch you next time.